Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse. The Cryptoverse is your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. My name is Chris Coney and I'm the host of the Cryptoverse and the founder of Cryptoversity.com, the online school where you set the price to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. You can find out more at Cryptoversity.com. If you go to the podcast page, you can subscribe to the podcast on any of your favorite platforms, whether that be iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Store, YouTube, or Steemit. And to support the Cryptoverse and see it continue, please click through to Steemit, vote for this episode on the Steam Network, or send us a tip to the Bitcoin address that's on the screen now, or if you're listening to this, on the page. So let's go to the market roundup today. We had a break from the market roundup yesterday because I had a conversation with Roger Veer about Steemit. So we'll see what's happened there. Now straight away, um, we see that Steemit has dropped 10.6%. not saying that's got anything to do with my conversation with him at all. Um, but Roger did say that um, the first thing he did when he earned some money on Steam, on the Steam network, was to sell his steam back dollars and see if he could convert them into Bitcoin. Um, which is interesting because then... That means that, I guess because Steam is new, he wanted to convert them into Bitcoin because he sees that somehow as more of a real money. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not speaking, I'm speaking for him there. That's not what he said to me. But I guess, I guess I can understand that mindset um, from the point of view of Steam is new and Bitcoin is far more proven and far more spendable than Steam back dollars. So if you had a bunch of Steam back dollars, um, steam back dollars have the same problem that Bitcoin had in the beginning and still has to a large degree today, which is where do you spend them, right? So if you want to spend them, the next logical thing is to exchange them for Bitcoins, right? And if you want to spend them uh, even more widely, you would change your Bitcoins back into US dollars, right? So what we see here in the fifth most capitalized coin is Steam, and it, today's price drop has put it down at 95 cents a token. Uh, on on only two hundred seventy thousand dollars worth of trading volume, so I'm definitely going to be picking up, up some more Steam at this price. There was a good analysis on on the actual Steam network. Someone wrote an article about explaining the price drop, and uh, a lot a lot of the analysis had to do with the fact that it rocketed like fifteen hundred percent soon after the um, they started paying out. So the losses are just a correction. You could see that the the drop in price is just a correction from a massive upturn. And the fellow in that article said that he expects that the price to drop a little bit more. And he was right, because I read that article yesterday, and uh, it still dropped a little bit. So I'm definitely going to be picking up some more steam. I'm probably going to buy, I don't know what, a few hundred dollars worth. What else we got in the top 10? The top four, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and Litecoin, all pretty stable. The biggest mover in the top five, actually, other than Steam, is Ethereum Core, and it's gained 0.7%, 79%. Uh, in contrast to Ethereum Classic, which is down 1.7%. So by comparison, an Ethereum Classic token is worth $1.33, and Ethereum Classic token is worth $11.35. I always like to look at the trading volumes, pretty much even. Both of them have well, just over $7 million worth of trading volume, in the last 24 hours. I find that fascinating. Unless unless Ethereum Classic tokens are being traded for Ethereum Core tokens, I don't think that explains exactly why the volumes are exactly the same, but you never know. And actually, that wouldn't show up on here, would it? If, if would that show up on here? No, I don't think so. Um, yes, it would. Yes, it would show up on here. So when it says $7 million traded, I think that's based on exchange volume it doesn't necessarily mean people are turning their Ethereums back into dollars. It just means that you could just take the number of Ethereum tokens traded and multiply it by the dollar price. And then you could work out the volume in US dollars, if you know what I'm saying. But that doesn't mean that $7 million worth of Ethereum has been bought or sold in dollars, if you follow me. Right, let's look at the rest of the top 10 here. Monero is in, still in the ninth position. It's gained another 6%. Uh, another, it's been up and down. Since I did that article the other day on Monero uh, being adopted by a couple of dark markets. And Monero is now worth $4.26. $7 million worth of... Uh, sorry, Monero has been traded. $7 million worth. What else have we got here? 
made safe up 1%. Anybody else significant? NXT, 9% gain today. Anybody else of any interest? Um, Peer plays has shaved 4% today. And that's about it. Scenario is shaved 4.3%. Hmm. How interesting. You know, you know, we've got these um, <clears throat> two camps in crypto. The traders are always thinking short term because they're not inter not necessarily interested in crypto for its humanitarian benefits. They just think it's a new tool for uh, gaining profits in the short term. Now, there are some traders that are do believe in it as well, but I would, I would argue that the vast majority of traders trade crypto primarily because it's just a new opportunity to make profits. And that means that these price movements will um, reflect far more on the basis of technical analysis than it will on fundamentals, which actually brings us to the Bitcoin price chart. You know, just if, if you're a new listener or something, you don't know what I mean by technical analysis. That's where people trade without necessarily knowing much about the, the instrument itself. So you'd, you'd call it a financial instrument in the mainstream world. But if you were trading crypto, um, on a technical analysis basis, it would mean that you don't really know much about the coin itself, what it stands for, how it works. Um, all you would do is look at the the price data as a graph or a chart like I am doing right now. And then you do just analysis on the price patterns and then base your direct trading decisions purely on that technical data. Um, and I, when I was in my trading classes a few years ago, they gave me a figure something like 80 or 90 percent of all trading or all traders rely purely on technical analysis the alternative is fundamental analysis which is the opposite which is where you don't necessarily care about what the price is doing on the chart day to day but you would invest because the the currency or the project has a fundamental value to it like if if it's solving solving a fundamental problem that you think isn't going away then you could ignore the price and say right fundamentally this is sound in the long term it's going to be huge so i invest my money for the long term so that's generally how it goes fundamental analysis and fundamental investing is more of a long-term thing technical analysis while it doesn't have to be short term it is more or short term uh, you can do technical analysis on a long-term basis but generally it's more to spot short-term price movements and of the two, I would say that technical analysis is a lot easier to learn um, because you just have to be able to read the chart and then employ a trading strategy. Whereas fundamental analysis requires you to know a lot about, you know, the, the whatever the instrument is. If it were a business that you were investing in, you'd have to know oh, about the legal landscape and the pr probably the people involved in the company, its history, um, competitors in the marketplace all that kind of stuff which technical analysis pretty much ignores and you can blend the two but um you don't have to you could just trade purely on technical analysis and make money that way so in terms of technical analysis then if you watch the cryptoverse on youtube um you'll see the stuff that i draw over over the top of the chart is my technical analysis i use a something called a fibonacci retracement line or lines which show on here i've plotted it um from the most recent peak of $776 down to the uh, closing price of the recent Bitfinex crash, which was $540. And then from that, it calculates um, how we're gonna retrace, literally go back to that higher price because price is always in cycles, right? What goes up must come down and what goes down must come up in, uh, in currencies anyway. So right now we are sat in the range that I've been harping on about for, I think it might be coming up two weeks now. So what we're looking for is a move above $600, which should then signal a further move up or something. If it breaks down below $540, then that would be um, significant according to my technical analysis here, which is a, is that $540 mark seems to be a significant point on the chart. So if that broke and the day closed below that, then my speculation would be that people would begin to sell their Bitcoins um, more heavily. 
But at the minute, it's very quiet. The candles are very small at the moment. Well, relative to um, the other ones that I can see going back to mid-May. All right, that's going to do it for the first half of the Cryptoverse. Please stay tuned for the second half, where a lo whole lot more is coming your way. Welcome back to the Cryptoverse. My name's Chris Coney. Now it's time to turn to the news. Courtesy of Bitcoin.com. Good old Roger Veer. And this article is entitled Venezuelan Crypto Buyer Brokerage Sees Soaring Demand. And we've been graced with this article yet again by Jamie Redman. So if you've been following the mainstream news recently or the economic news, you may have heard about the crisis going on in Venezuela um, and their currency problems and yeah, it's a little bit of mayhem going on in the country. So let's see what this article has got to say for itself with regards to um, crypto. It was the first thing that I thought when I see these kinds of, you know, um, hyperinflations, currency collapses, manipulations by governments and so forth. It's just the ideal opportunity for those countries to adopt crypto, but they obviously need an exchange to trade their um, local currency for the crypto, or they need a way of earning the crypto, right? Because your your physical labor, that's a kind of capital. So you don't just need financial capital. Um, with Just like Steemit is a good example, Steemit um, doesn't require you to exchange your fiat currency or any currency for uh, the Steam currency. You can earn it by posting content, basically. So here this article says that Venezuela is in economic turmoil, shaking the country to its core. Venezuelan digital asset brokerage crypto buyer believes the country's situation warrants a broadening in the currency options for citizens to cater to this, to this perceived need perceived need are you, are you serious i don't know if it's a perceived need i think it's a definite need to cater to this perceived need the firm enables venezuelans to purchase bitcoin and recently they've added dash Crypto buyer offers Bitcoin and Dash to Venezuelan Venezuelan citizens. Venezuelan, Venezuelan citizens. So, Crypto buyer is a Venezuelan-based crypto brokerage, uh, Caracas, I think that says. I guess which is the place in Venezuela where it's based. So they have revealed the addition of Dash to their cryptocurrency initiative. The firm believes adding Dash to the equation will benefit thousands of Venezuelan citizens suffering from a failing economy. Well, you know, um, I heard during the economic crisis in Venezuela, this was a few weeks ago, even probably a month or so ago, that Coca-Cola temporarily shut down their um, manufacturing plant there, which was manufacturing um, sugar, you know, full sugar Coca-Cola because there was a sugar shortage. And they carried on manufacturing the diet drink, um, but there was there was a sugar shortage, so they um, they couldn't continue to manufacture. They couldn't get it in there. I mean, that's that's bad, right? Now reports have shown that Venezuela has been suffering from massive food shortages, inflation, and power outages due to the failed economic policies of its socialist government. There we go. Every time, um, now I'm going to have my political agenda coming right at you right now. Okay. So that is what happens when you follow a socialist uh, paradigm. Every time you follow that, you look at any any socialist um, country in, in history, they all lead to this same conclusion. Fiat currencies all collapse and socialist, socialist uh, governments always lead to chaos in the country. So, which is why I'm an advocate of the free market and uh, you know, volunteerism and all that kind of thing, the non-aggression principle, all those philosophical truths and principles that are self-evident. By partnering with the Dash community, crypto buyer will enable more efficient uh, remittance solutions with Bitcoin and Dash. This includes everyday transactions, mobile phone top-ups, and recharge services for prepaid cards. The company says, since the economy started getting really turbulent with the Bolivia, the Bolivia? Bolivar, the Bolivar, okay, the Bolivar, I guess the Bolivar is the Venezuelan currency, don't quote me on that, sounds like it. So with the Bolivar dropping against the US dollar 40% in just one year, it has seen soaring demand for cryptocurrencies. Hmm, I wonder why that would be. 
maybe it's because you know cryptocurrencies like dash and bitcoin are beyond the reach of any government and that doesn't matter what kind of government it is socialist government dict dictatorial government you know uh libertarian democracy doesn't matter crypto you know i'm not advocating for um oh i am advocating for a particular political agenda but my advocacy for cryptocurrencies doesn't relate to that at all right i don't i'm not saying that if we had um a true democracy or a true liberty that we wouldn't need crypto no hell no it, it's um is a separate issue and i think a necessary ingredient in the whole thing if we're going to have a free uh, a free planet so ceo of crypto buyer george farias he says in a quote crypto buyer is a cryptocurrency and digital asset connector for companies and individuals that bring a range of services that will improve venezuelan's financial liberty our partnership with dash is valuable especially for customers using unstable fiat currencies and the perfect example can be found in venezuela right now alternatives for accessing money without traditional banks are gaining traction fast and we are incredibly confident that dash will flourish in this economy from a phone credit recharge for a friend to the payment of credit cards and tv subscriptions crypto buyer makes bitcoin and dash a reality in daily life and keeps offering incredible financial benefits without the need for a bank account close quote jolly good sounds good to me i'm very pleased by this news i don't know about you the currency crisis in venezuela has brought about long bread lines and black markets are often the way of getting food with government-run stores such as uh, merkel and bicentenario bicentenario always out of stock almost always out of stock crypto buyer notes that it has successfully acc accrued thousands of users so far in venezuela brazil panama chile colombia uh, and colombia as citizens in these struggling nations search for financial alternatives now i don't know if you've ever seen this movie before but i watched it again a couple of nights ago it's v for vendetta and when it says things like food shortages guess i mean i'm going to speculate but guess who's very very unlikely to be going without three meals a day have a guess the prime minister and the government ministers i i would bet my bottom dollar that these folks are not having to experience the same hardship as the citizens because if they were i, I think you would see the situation turn around on a dime right if they themselves were inconvenienced and discomforted in the same way as the citizens their motivation to turn it around might be slightly higher and that, that just reminded me of viva vendetta because in that the um the politicians and the people with power have all of the illicit goods like butter and all the stuff that's banned um and then no one else is allowed to uh, to have that kind of stuff so it just reminded me of that so anyway um what else we got here where, where have i left off yeah so all these other south american countries are searching for alternatives for venezuelans with limited access to internet or smartphones dash and bitcoin are made accessible from crypto buyers local partner tigo ctm remittance processes like moneygram and western union closed operations in venezuela when the government enacted various sanctions against them in 2005 leaving citizens largely cut off from family members providing financial support from abroad that's disgusting now that if that isn't uh, a move by the government to control the money system i don't know what is by 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 making the environment so inhospitable to people like money and western union um they're basically killing competition for government currency and so they have absolute control trouble is you can't do that with crypto and that's why we love it so well so the, the next thing is like the they would go for is uh, i did a story the other day was it um oh, i can't remember which country it was in it slips in my mind because i'm being recorded i think of it off the top of my head but it was um was it colombia's colombia's first crypto exchange got shut down by the government so that's that's the point of failure if the government decided to go after this crypto buyer um because that's the gateway to crypto obviously they can't stop crypto as a whole but they can take out the nodes and one of the nodes is this crypto buyer, buyer company 
E. So now Bitcoin and Dash have arrived to the country they provide uh, could be life-saving financial solutions. In the hopes of remaining in the government's good graces, CryptoBuyer is trying to offer its cryptocurrency solution to Venezuelans while remaining within the nation's legal framework. Yes, they're very wise to do that. Um, however, they, the government could just change the legal framework at any moment or, or you know, yeah, they could just do what they want. Cryptocurrency solutions will be there for Venezuelans to lean on. Dash VP of Business Development uh, Daniel Diaz thanks Crypto Buyer Services, or thinks Crypto Buyer Services provide a great advantage for Latin America's citizens. Since the arrival of three digit inflation and capital controls in Venezuela, Crypto Buyer has seen an influx of people seeking better solutions to preserve their wealth and their livelihoods. The brokerage says it will be there with Dash and Bitcoin to help citizens escape economic hardship. And then let's just read this quick quote from Daniel Diaz and then we'll close for the day. He says, this is the fellow who is the business development guy at Dash. He says, quote, with Venezuelans entrenched in political and economic turmoil, we simply wanted to give them another option to make life easier. Dash is stable, safe and holds its value extremely well. Crypto buyer will help Dash take a step towards offering real services to regular people that are not just digital currency investors. So it really opens the door for us to fulfill our vision of making a tangible difference in places where digital currencies can help the most. Dash is proud to support pioneering driven Venezuelans like crypto buyer who are making a difference through entrepreneurship and technology. How sweet. So that's going to do it for today's edition of the Cryptoverse with me, Chris Coney. I'd like to thank you for listening today. Please go over to Cryptoversity.com and the podcast page. Get yourself subscribed on either iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, YouTube or Steam it. And please support the Cryptoverse by clicking through to Steam it, voting for this episode on the Steam Network and providing us with a Bitcoin tip using the address on that page. Also remember to check yourself out the main site, Cryptoversity.com, the online school where you set the price to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I will see you tomorrow for the next episode, guys. Until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.